It's time for Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. A powerful Pacific storm is going to bring much colder temperatures and widespread mountain snow throughout the Intermountain West and Rockies over the next few days. Heavy rain and scattered flash flooding is possible for portions of the central and southern high plains. Above average temperatures and gusty winds are forecast across the northern tier of the nation into the weekend. Closer to home, strong winds are expected today for west of the Rio Grande with breezy winds elsewhere. Rain chances are going to linger into the weekend for northern areas. Drier and warm conditions return next week. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. Matt Cresselius, that's a name we have not said in some time now. Well, he's made the news once again. This time, it might be the last time. The Democrat Party of New Mexico have officially expelled Cresselius from any and all party activities, and this includes involvement with the Gabe Vasquez campaign. A memo released by the DPNM, signed by Chair Jessica Velasquez, Secretary Isaac Casados, and Executive Director Sean Ward, calls on the indefinite censure and expulsion both immediately and indefinitely. Cresselius had been accused of inappropriately touching females in attendance of events, bullying guests, members, and candidates, attacking people with baseless claims, and suspected of mishandling party money while serving as treasurer. The Democratic Party of Otero County traditionally awarded a scholarship in years past, but did not do so in 2023, with many suggestions and suspicions pointed at Cresselius for spending that money, which was dog-eared. Cannabis sales in New Mexico from 2022 to date have reached over $1.3 billion, with Alamogordo coming in as the 10th largest market in the state. At a meeting of the legislature's Economic and Rural Development and Policy Committee this week, cannabis industry leaders called on lawmakers to give the state's cannabis regulators more authority in order to address unlicensed marijuana businesses. You know, before 2022, we just called those drug dealers. Industry leaders actually called for more legislation and more inspectors in order to enforce the law. We heard from some cannabis experts. I can smoke anything, man. You know, like I smoked that Michoacan, man, Acapulco Gold, man. I even smoked that tight stick, you know? Tight stick? Yeah, you know, that stuff is tied to a stick. Many locals in Alamogordo have called for a moratorium, calling out the fact that there are multiple dispensaries and yet the city is lacking bars or nightclubs so that lacks entertainment and the enjoyment of alcoholic beverages. With many hands, Tularosa Representative Greg Gutierrez gave us an update on what the reception was by the village trustees regarding the community garden. Then in September, we had a fall seed planting session and shared an educational opportunity on what kinds of seeds you can plant in the fall and winter. You can hear this conversation in full on the Crazy Radio YouTube channel. The Corks and Shells Wine and Pistachio Festival happens tomorrow. We heard from Stephanie Hale of Thrive in Southern New Mexico. Join us for a delightful celebration of two Southern New Mexico favorites, wine and pistachios. This festival promises to be a feast for the senses, featuring the finest local wines paired with the crunchiest, most flavorful pistachios you've ever tasted. Join us for an afternoon of wine, pistachios, and community spirit at the Corks and Shells Wine and Pistachio Festival this Saturday from noon to 6 at Alameda Park. For more information, you can reach us at 575-437-8400. Enjoy sipping wine, savoring local bites, browsing the pop-up shops, and hopping on the Toy Train Depot. That's only 5 bucks a person. Kids 3 and under, they're free. Well, today is Friday. It's time for a cat chat from Kitty City NM. Hi, this is Kathy Denton from Kitty City, and welcome to this week's edition of Cat Chat. This past spring and summer, we saw many kittens arrive at Kitty City. And hands down, this year's award for the most kittens of a particular breed this is the ever-popular and delightful gray tabby. And the arrivals have not slowed down. I would like to highlight just a few of our terrific tabbies. First, we have Handsome and Bethany. We are now fostering these beautiful babies in our home. Of course, Handsome received his name because he is a very handsome guy. He is 12 weeks old and has short fur. While Bethany is not related to Handsome, she is hanging out with him. Bethany is three weeks younger than Handsome and is a short-haired, dark gray tabby. She is a bit shy, and we're hoping Handsome's outgoing nature will rub off on her. Next is Chica, born in April. 
She's a bit shy, but we can pick her up and cuddle. And as we work with her, she is becoming more and more of a lap kitty. Scooter and Climber are brother and sister who are hanging out together at Kitty City while waiting for their forever home. Scooter is a good-looking classic gray tabby who loves cuddles and pets. He is so friendly, playful, and full of energy. Climber is also affectionate. As her name implies, Climber likes to climb up a person's leg to take a nap on their lap. She is very playful and enjoys playing with other kitties as well as humans. She has some scar tissue on her left eye from an infection when she was younger, but this does not affect her energy or play at all. Pewter and Climber were born and raised in a foster home. Pewter is neutered and Climber is spayed, and they both are up to date on their vaccinations and are microchipped. I feel our sweet girl, Meowie, must get equal time with the kittens. Although she's one and a half years old and officially no longer a kitten, Meowie came to Kitty City at the height of kitten season in April of this year. Meowie has a beautiful marble dark gray tabby coat. She is a super friendly young lady. She comes up to visitors to greet them when they enter her room. She is so affectionate and cuddly with humans and gets along well with all the other cats. Everyone is her friend. Meowie's ready to go to her forever home. Come visit Handsome, Bethany, Tika, Pewter, Climber, and Meowie at Kitty City at 56 Stanley Ranch Road. Or go to our website at www.kittycitynm.com and see all of our sweet cats and kittens waiting for their forever family. Tomorrow, Saturday, October 19, please stop by the White Sands Mall from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. for the Kitty City Adoption event. Kitty City will have kittens and adult cats, and Alamogordo Animal Control will have dogs all ready for their forever homes. Kitty City has a special of first cat or kitten full price, second cat or kitten half price. Alamogordo Animal Control also has discounts on all of their adoptions. See you tomorrow, Saturday, October 19, or next Saturday, October 26, at the White Sands Mall to find your forever friend. This has been this week's edition of Cat Chat. I'm Kathy Denton, and I'll be talking to you next week from Kitty City. Kitty City and you. No one loves them better. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Local news from local perspectives, from local voices. Alamogordotownnews.org. Local sports, local events, and local happenings and more. Nonprofit owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. Alamogordotownnews.org. Heard daily on Crazy KALH Radio 95.1. Direct Free Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side, Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. Four suspects were arrested during a recent sting operation targeting potential child predators who were ordered to remain in jail. Among them is Samantha Clark, accused of trying to meet someone she believed was offering a child for sex. Other suspects include University of New Mexico graduate Mahmoud Telfa, accountant Matthew Jaramillo, and middle school teacher Stephen Phillips. Homeland Security Investigation Special Agent in Charge J.T. Stevens issued this warning to other would-be predators. If you're out there and you're le- lurking in the dark looking for our children and teens, we're going to be back there looking for you. All four suspects were denied requests for release. Judge David Murphy cited the specific dangers they posed to the community. Joseph Tony of Albuquerque admitted to killing two women in 2021 when he was 15 years of age. He initially had a plea deal, but it was nullified when he escaped from a juvenile detention center, which allowed the judge to impose a harsher sentence of 45 years. In 2021, Tony fatally shot Ariel Mollum and Jessica Lucero, also wounding Mollum's uncle during a robbery. Tony spoke at his sentencing. At first, you guys hit it right on. When you said, I was sorry because I got caught because that was the case. It was. It took a lot of time and a lot of me learning about real life situations like reading the news and, and, and reading books about real life and truly understanding that life is a precious thing. I don't know. I'm thinking he knew it was wrong to kill before he read a damn thing. The judge rejected his lawyer's request for a reduced sentence. Citing the severity of the crime, Tony still faces trial for his escape. Jason Salis was sentenced to seven years in prison on Wednesday for voluntary manslaughter in a 2022 motorcycle crash which killed Jose Gomez. Salis was acquitted of first and second degree murder charges but was found guilty of manslaughter by a Las Cruces jury. The crash occurred when Salis, driving an SUV, 
allegedly sped after the motorcycle, ran a red light, and collided with the bike. He also struck other vehicles. Gomez died at the scene. Navajo Nation President Boo Nigren announced that he has stripped Vice President Rochelle Montoya of her responsibilities and has called on her to resign after she refused to submit required paperwork, among other issues. I continue to ask the Vice President to submit to me her daily schedules and submit progress reports. She has refused all of these requests. Instead, she has only given me travel requests forms for events that have nothing to do with this administration's priorities. Montoya gave her answer to KOAT. I made a commitment to my people that I would do my very best for them for the next four years during my inauguration speech. And Navajo woman, we have a fear, our matriarchs. <laughs> if I go back on my word, I have to face them. And I don't want to do that. Montoya recently claimed that she was sexually harassed within the administration and the nation's attorney general is currently investigating that claim. Is it wrong for me to say the timing of that claim seems rather convenient? Navajo citizens are calling for Nigren's resignation, alleging he's misusing funds and neglecting his duties. Montoya allegedly signed this petition, and there's no question she has a lot to gain here. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham will not renew her public health order targeting gun violence in New Mexico now that that health order has expired. No big deal since it was essentially defanged and declawed. Even State Attorney General Raul Torres stated his office wouldn't defend the order. Bernalillo County Sheriff John Allen, among many others, also stated the same. Managing Editor Algaron de Massa of the Las Cruces Bulletin explained to KRWG why there will be no CD2 debate between Yvette Harrell and Gabe Vasquez. Just not agreeing to a date in the Vasquez campaign saying that they had conflicts with the schedule and they're going to be in Albuquerque on the preferred dates. There's also perhaps a significant factor here, which is that some recent polling shows Vasquez favored 8 to 9 percent in some surveys of voters. While that is a greater margin than that of his victory two years ago, this is one of the most hotly contested House seats in the nation. Assuming the win here, at the very least, is arrogant. Sports and weather are coming up next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, they just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. There are four matches for New Mexico volleyball today, including Clovis Christian at Hondo. And Friday night light shine bright tonight. 40 games for New Mexico football, including Animus at Carrizozo. Redoso heads to the Institute, Fort Sumner House at Cloudcroft, Capitan goes to Raton, St. Pius at Chaparral, and Tularosa heads to Eunice. Go Wildcats! Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for mostly sunny skies with a 30% chance for showers, winds gusting up to 37 miles per hour. Mostly cloudy skies tonight with a 40% chance for showers. New rainfall amounts are expected to be less than one-tenth of an inch. Winds will be gusting up to 37. Partly sunny skies tomorrow with a 40% chance of showers. Winds gusting up to 30. Your high today in the basin, 77. Low tonight of 54. High tomorrow, 73 degrees. In Cloudcroft, mostly sunny skies today with a 30% chance of showers. Winds gusting up to 33 miles per hour. Mostly cloudy skies tonight with a 40% chance of showers. New rainfall amounts less than one-tenth of an inch expected. Winds gusting up to 31. Tomorrow, partly sunny with a 50% chance of showers. Winds gusting as high as 28. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 55. Low tonight of 36. Wind chills are going to make it feel like it's 31. High tomorrow, 52 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.org, and you can learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting kalhradio.org. Also, be sure to check out the Crazy KALH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tula Rosa Basin. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. That way, you too can remain informed of the goings-on in the Tula Rosa Basin.
Well, that concludes this Friday edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Have a wonderful weekend.